Okay, hey, here's part two to the simple steps, 10 things you can do to create an exceptional life. Now, um, I know it's not directly from me, but I think it's really cool and I just wanna share it in case someone needed a little for the day. Because <laughs> um, we all have things we're going through. Um, anyways, so today's is called Your Attitude is Your Future. An attitude stands as the one area in your life where you are in complete and total control. Now, external events can change. Uh, what you do with your life, how long you live, where you live, and you know, a bunch of other factors. Other people can force you to accept their routines or their ideas. But attitude is different, okay? No one can make you accept an attitude you don't want. You know, you can be happy despite the circumstances. Each of us has the power to choose. That's what's so cool. To have a positive attitude or a negative one. Of all the simple steps that, that um, we're going to talk about over this series, this is the one that has to go first. Your attitude. It is the bedrock beneath all your other steps that follow. Your attitude is your future, pure and simple. Choosing the right one will profoundly change your life at once and even today, okay? That's how powerful it is. So now you need to decide on your attitude. So in May of 1985, the Dutch consulate asked um, a church to sponsor a Sunday service that was gonna commemorate the 40th anniversary of um, the liberation of Holland, right? It was an inspiring day. Volunteers hung banners in the church, the choir sang some special music, and of course many dignitaries attended. Among them were American pilots who had dropped food into occupied Holland and the farmers um, that received that food. For these people to meet face to face was extraordinarily um, emotional and meaningful. There were tears and embraces, of course. Uh, for, for the depth of emotion, I can't recall uh, too many occasions com that compare to this. After the service, there was a commemorative luncheon um, and so we all had the opportunity to see, sit at a table with several people, and some of them knew me. I'm going to share this in first person. <laughs> Among them, there was a woman who was 60 years old. Um, oh, she was lovely and elegant. Pleasant, warm, and gentle. Yet from the lines in her face, you could see that life had been interesting and um, challenging. So as we began to talk, her story unfolded. She had been sent to a German concentration camp uh, while she was a teenager. And while there, she saw the smoke that came out of the chimneys every day from those gas ovens. The smoke represented the bodies of every member of her family. She was the only one that survived. She described the scene to me one day of the liberation that finally came and she was able to walk free. All she owned was the clothes she had on her back. And she told me that at that moment, she did something that would affect the rest of her life. She said, I had a decision to make. My rest of my life was ahead of me. I could decide to live a happy life or an unhappy one, filled with resentment and hatred. I decided I would be happy. She went on and it wasn't easy. Not one day or night had gone by 
where she didn't have a nightmare or some harrowing memory of those four years. So it wasn't easy to choose to be happy. But she said, I have a very good life and I am a happy woman. Notice it was I am, not I was or I will be, but I am. No one looking into this woman's eyes ever accused her of being superficial. A Pollyanna, you know, someone who chose to see only artificially positive aspects of life while shutting out all knowledge of the negatives? No. She was a realist who chose to be positive. That is something to aspire to. She knew that even in her darkest days, and you have to understand, she had some really dark days. And if you're reading this, or not reading this, if you're listening to me, you very well may have had some very dark days yourself. I have too. Very dark, dark days. Her attitude was the factor that would determine whether her life would sink down into misery or rise up into fulfillment. She saw that her attitude was her future and that choice was hers alone. No one could take it from her. No one could make a change. It was hers alone. Each of us, regardless of circumstances, has that power. Take that step. It's the first step. And possibly the most profound of all of them that we will be sharing together in these little video segments. So, your choice, choose to be happy, um, find joy in life, even on the most darkest, dismal day that you have, or a night that is filled with nightmares and you may cry. And there, it's not, a, like I said, it's, it's not the Pollyanna where you ignore the negative and you pretend that life is grand. It's being a realist in accepting the difficulties, recognizing the tragedies, um, embracing the horrors, whatever they may be, and finding joy in who you are, in your circumstances that surround you and And if you make a difference only for yourself, that's how you feel, that's okay. Because what people want to see is a real joy, a real positive attitude. And that attitude will spread and be more infectious among everyone around you than you could possibly imagine. So don't smile here Smile here and here.